Uh, what is happening is genocide in the country right now. And the Oromo people are getting killed every day. And the current government is minority, five million out of the hundred million. And, uh, and those groups are uh, part of the group that are responsible for creating Al-Shabaab. Uh, we, the people of that country, knows about this uh, tragedy that's happening. So the, uh, this happened under uh, previous administration. Uh, and here, uh, President Trump came into power with a lot of uh, mess left behind uh, by the other group. Now, uh, because of a lot of issues that's happening even in the country right now in the U.S., our president, uh, President Trump, is really... Uh, not focusing too much about international issue because we have national issue within this country. So what is happening is genocide. The Oromo people are getting killed. The minority Tigray government is killing the people every single day. Uh, we want American people to be aware of this and people around the world to join us. It's ending the genocide and uh, donating for uh, Oromo refugees around the world in the United Nations. Uh, most of the offices are, are rejecting the Oromo uh, refugee cases. There is a genocide in Ethiopia, and they escape from the genocide, and they're not getting attention around the world. And the United Nations is too reluctant to work on their issue because of the tight system uh, that the Tigrayans, the minority ruling the country, uh, to the point they bribe people in the United Nations. So they don't pay attention to this largest nation, the indigenous people, of Ethiopia, the country currently called Ethiopia, uh, or Oromo. Foremost, I'd like to uh, thank the witnesses for coming here and to putting yourselves in a public place uh, on the record uh, when you are dealing with a brutal regime that you have no idea whether or not you will face retaliation. And so thank you for having the courage and, and thank you and thank you for your patriotism in to your country of Ethiopia. And frankly, I believe all those people who believe in honest government, all those people who believe in honest elections and uh, representative government uh, are all basically uh, Americans at heart. So we, we fellow, your fellow Americans who share those values wish you well. And uh, I want to thank Chris Smith as, as the chairman of this subcommittee. Uh, I, I believe the fact that he's put this hearing together. Uh, he is a man unrelenting in his efforts uh, to expand freedom and respect for the dignity of individuals around this world. And uh, nowhere, and nowhere is that message of Chris Smith more important than in Ethiopia. And uh, let me just say that uh, I think it is disgraceful that, uh, especially after the election of 2005, where there was clearly a loss of the ruling party, and then we end up with understanding that, that a, uh, uh, I say, a, oh, whatever I want to describe it as, an, off, uh, an offensive after the election with military equipment uh, spreads out throughout the country of Ethiopia, and the people of Ethiopia begin feeling oppression immediately after a supposed free election. And the worst part of that is that these people who were out there in their uniforms had American weapons that they were using to repress their own people. This is, uh, I believe that, uh, that there has to be some level that we Americans have, if indeed we do share if we really are soulmates with people who love freedom around the world, at the very least, we should say that corrupt regimes that's, that utilize weapon systems from the United States to repress their own people will not be provided those weapons. And so I would renew that today. It's time to eliminate Ethiopia from its ability to purchase and to obtain United States weapons. And... Uh, and, and, okay, so what is the result of all of this? What's going on? Well, the result of this is uh, you have repression, political repression. And how does it uh, manifest itself? 20% of the people of Ethiopia are hungry. They're starving. This is outrageous. This is a country that has every ability to feed itself if it had honest government. 
And instead, you have a small click running Ethiopia, and as we've heard the testimony today, a small click that's corrupt and brutal, and the product of that uh, raping of that country, the product of that is not only repression, but misery and hunger for a large percentage of its people. That's disgraceful, and uh, it's time for the United States. Uh, I, I understand during this whole war against radical Islam, and we have been at war with radical Islam because they are at war with us. Radical Islamic terrorists want to hurt the United States. We have used that as an excuse to, to form a relationship with, with a horrible regime. I, I, have, it's, I, I have to ask you, now, it, if we didn't uh, support uh, this government in Ethiopia that says it's helping us with radical Islamic terrorists. Wouldn't just regular people and a really honestly elected government be against radical Islamic terrorism? Uh, it was, so, so there you go. Now, let me know how, let me let you know how I understand, how I came to understand this issue. Uh, I am a surfer out in California, all right? That's what I do. I'm a surfer. And uh, I, uh, and I couldn't help but notice that there was a black surfer who was with me out in the water, okay? So one of the few black surfers in California is Petros Brahani, who comes from Ethiopia and became one of my best friends. And his family owned a major distillery in uh, Addis Ababa, and uh, they, uh, uh, it was a big, and when the communists took over, they left, they fled, and they are, uh, his family are now U.S. citizens, proud U.S. citizens, and uh, uh, anyway, he told me about the plight of his family. We tried to get, and after the communists left, they were supposed to get back the distillery. All of the property that was illegally confiscated was supposed to be given back by the current ruling clique. But instead, the current ruling clique found out that his distillery was actually, had been making money, and so they're not getting back their distillery. Now, the reason I'm telling you this is because I've been a member of Congress here for a number of years. I'm a senior member. So I've been working for my, my yes, my, my surfing buddy, but he's also my constituent, who I'm watching out for his needs. And, and I was demanding that the Ethiopian government, at, if they're not going to give back that distillery, at least give him some compensation for taking the distillery. Well... The government there has been so arrogant, they refuse to even consider any type of compensation. I had the Overseas Private Investment Corporation do an analysis to make sure that that claim was a legitimate claim. And they came back and said, yep, we find the fact that the Burhani family honestly owns that, and they should be given some compensation for it. Well, uh, in, and I said, okay, there's going to be no loans guaranteed through the, through the Overseas Private Investment Corporation to Ethiopia until they treat this American citizen right and do justice by him. All of these years now, it's been over 10 years, maybe 15 years, the government of Ethiopia is so arrogant, are also maybe making money from the distillery themselves, that they were willing to sacrifice the well-being of the people of Ethiopia in order not to pay any just compensation to a man whose, whose distillery had been uh, illegally confiscated. Now, if you just take Petros out of the picture and you just say, these people who are heading that government do not care anything enough about their people to, because all these investments which we would have been involved with helping bring jobs and money and wealth to Ethiopia, they rejected that because they themselves were not going to necessarily benefit from it as compared to owning that distillery or whatever they're getting from that distillery. So if we have a government that cares that little about their own people, a government that basically uh, is, represents a very tall, small minority of people in Ethiopia, and we are providing that small clique, that corrupt and brutal clique, it's time for the United States to step up and say, we've made a mistake by going down the road with that clique of people. 
we should be friends with the overall population of Ethiopia and not just that clique. That would serve America's interest as well as the people of Ethiopia. With that said.